Are you ready to pray? Uh, we handed that out last week. Uh, did anybody bring that back? I've got a, a few here. <coughs> All right. We, uh, for a few weeks, just looking at the subject of prayer, it's good to be reminded. I mean, prayer is such a natural part of the Christian life, but uh, a lot in the Bible that talks about it, and of course, a lot of pray, praying recorded. We, we looked at the, the fact that in prayer, really, we're relying on the character of God. You know, when you come to God, you, you're just trusting uh, what we know about Him. And... Uh, the Bible says that he's, he's always good, he's always willing to listen, and we're looking for the will of God. And I think that's really an important part of prayer. It's, it's not just that we're, we're not trying to get God to do our will, we're in prayer trying to get God to show us his will <laughs> so that we can know what to do. And we talked about how we, in prayer, we respond to the invitations of God. Really what that's talking about is you're, you're claiming the promises of God in prayer. Well, tonight we want to look at this, this subject, are you ready to pray? Um, and, and I would encourage you to keep this, this list and just every once in a while have a look at it and just remind yourself, just uh, think about it. It's, it's good to examine your life every once in a while. Now, you don't want to do it all the time, but uh, I think the quote is, the unexamined life is not worth living or, or something like that. Uh, we do need to stop and think every once in a while about what we're doing and how we're doing it and where we're going. And uh, this is a, just a quick list in thinking about are we, are we really in the right way of praying? Number one is, are all sins confessed? And really what we're talking about there is getting right with God. Now that's part of prayer, isn't it? Uh, we pray and, and get right with God. And the, the verse there is Isaiah 59, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, neither is ear heavy that it cannot hear. But... Your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. It's important for us to be right with God. We can say all we want, but God's going to say, well, what about that sin? <laughs> you know, we, got to, we need to take care of that. Uh, the quote there, of course, from 1 John 1.10, if we say we've not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. There's a, a verse in 2 Chronicles, I, I think I know it, where it says, if my people, which are called by my name, to humble themselves and pray and seek my, and turn, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven. He just says it's important for us to, to turn from our wicked ways. We need to confess our sin. Uh, Psalm 66, 18, If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Uh, there is a positive side to this. 1 John 3 and, and verse 22, probably know this verse. Whatsoever we ask, we receive of him, because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. You know, there's the negative. We need to confess our sins. We need to make sure that we're right with God in that way. But we just need to be right with God. That's, that's part of prayer and part of uh, being ready then to, to pray on. The second area is, all, are all relationships with others made right? We not only need to be right with God, we need to be right with man. And the, the Bible says this is... This is an important part of, of our Christian life. One of my favorite verses on this is Romans 12, 18, where he says, If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. <laughs> you know, God knows there's just some situations are difficult, but uh, he says we need to forgive others and we need to seek forgiveness from others. The verse given there is Matthew 6, where it talks about uh, if we don't forgive, God won't forgive us. That's a really strong verse, and we need to understand it and believe it. But also in Matthew 5, 23, he says, If thou bring thy gift to the altar, and there rememberest that thy brother hath aught against thee, leave there thy gift before the altar, and go thy way. First be reconciled to thy brother, and then come and offer thy gift. Now that's not specifically talking about prayer, but it is talking about your relationship with God and how it's affected by our relationships to people. 
Um, our relationships with others made right. There's a verse in 1 Peter 3, 7, where it relates it to marriage. 1 Peter 3, 7, specifically speaking to husbands, likewise ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. Yeah, it's important to have, have things right. Um, I looked at that word hindered. It's interesting. You know the verse where it talks about if your hand offends you, cut it off? Cut it off is hindered. <laughs> it's, it, hindered means cut it off or hewn down. And so it's, saying, it's not saying that this is just oh, a little bit of a problem. He's saying this is a big problem. <laughs> you know, if you're not right in, in uh, relationships. Uh, Samuel in the Old Testament, 1 Samuel 12, 23 I don't mean to be rushing. I feel like I am a little bit. But when uh, when Israel was wanting to have a king, and uh, Samuel was not going to be the leader anymore, what he said to them, for Samuel twelve twenty three, God forbid that I should sin against the Lord in ceasing to pray for you. We we need to be in a right relationship uh, with people, even when somebody offends you. Uh, we still need to be right with them as, as best we can. Uh, and a lot of this has to do with our attitude and not hardening our heart. You know, the more I've thought about that, the more I realize a lot of the problems in our world are because people harden their hearts. You know, divorce is basically where one or two of, of the people harden their heart and just say, I've had it, that's it, I'm out of here. Uh, we need to be careful as Christians. Our theme this year is keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life, Proverbs 4.23. Uh, that's what we're talking about. In prayer, we need to be right with God. We need to be right with people. Thirdly, are you seeking his will in all things? You know, when we're going to God in prayer, you remember I, I mentioned last week that cult called the cargo cult? People that worship the gone soldiers, hoping if they do everything, they'll get all the things back. <laughs> uh, that's not the way we want to be with God. We don't want to just pray and the right way so that we can get things from him. Uh, we want to be seeking his will. First uh, John 5, this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And we know that he hear us whatsoever we ask. I'm sorry, if we know that he hear us whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. And that's the key, looking for his will. And quite often it'll be different than ours. We need to wholeheartedly seek the Lord. Often in Scripture, that's an expression that they use. He sought them, they sought God with their whole heart. And that's the way we need to be, seeking His, his will. In Colossians 1 9, let's see here, Colossians chapter 1, verse 9, he's speaking to the church there, and he says, For this cause we also, since the day we heard of it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. That's what we should be looking for in prayer. Not just using God or just uh, trying to get something from him. Fourthly, are you seeking his glory? Now that's similar uh, to the third one. Uh, seeking to please God above all else. John 14, Jesus said, Whatsoever you he shall ask in my name that, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. I think I may have, have a misprint there. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Uh, the verse that comes to my mind is 1 Corinthians 10, 31. Whether therefore you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, uh, do all to the glory of God. And in praying, we need to keep that in mind. Uh, that needs to be the, the motivation in our prayers. We don't want to get waylaid by our glory. You know, we get so concerned about what we think. Fifthly, are you depending on the Holy Spirit's guidance? I think sometimes we just kind of forget about the Holy Spirit. I don't know, maybe not, but uh, I think there's times when we forget that this is not just words. You know, God's Holy Spirit is, is helping us. That verse in Romans talks about how you know, he helps us with groanings which cannot be uttered. That's not your groanings. That's the Holy Spirit helping you 
uh, you know, to get that message across to the Lord, uh, helping you to get what your heart really means, uh, rather than just the words that you're using. Uh, there's, there's quite a few verses here. Let me just read a couple. Galatians 5, verse 25. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. You know, we're saved because we have the Holy Spirit. Uh, we need to walk. We need to pray in the Spirit. Uh, Ephesians 5.18. I think. Okay, that's the one where it says, Be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. And God tells us, be filled with the Spirit. Uh, Ephesians 6.18. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. We need to be depending upon the Holy Spirit in our prayer life. And then the last two, I think, kind of go together. Are you trusting the Lord in spite of what seems to be? And will you praise God no matter what? Kind of hits both ends of it. You know, when you're asking some, God something specific, or when you're praying about a specific situation, sometimes what seems to be is just so hard to deal with. Um, Job said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. And we just don't always understand uh, what's going on. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, he says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Uh, I mentioned this, uh, I think, a week or two ago, but the one that comes to mind to me here is Joseph in the Old Testament. He didn't know what was going on. You know, his brothers sold him. He's a slave. Uh, he's lied about and he's jailed. He's forgotten. Then he's prime minister. <laughs> I mean, you know, when you get thrown in a pit, you think, oh, yeah, I'm on my way to being prime minister. <laughs> now, uh, you know, we just don't know. And, and we need to be trusting the Lord in spite of what seems to be. I had a guy call me this week, asked me to, to pray for him, and uh, you know, a medical condition, and he you know, claims to be a, a Christian. And, and I mentioned to him, I said, well, you know, at the worst uh, it means you get to go to heaven and that's not bad <laughs> uh, you know we, we need to have a eternal perspective and I know that's hard and it, it almost sounds hard if you say it to the wrong person but uh, are you trusting the, the Lord in spite of what seems to be that that's a, a part of our attitude in prayer and, and the other side is will you praise God no matter what you know, sometimes we have a certain outcome in mind and uh, the thing is you don't always know when you're to the outcome <laughs> Uh, but things happen, and, and we, the Bible says, in, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Uh, Romans 8, we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. Uh, we just need to have an attitude of, of praise. There's a verse in Psalm 22. I was trying to find it today, and I thought it said God inhabits praise, but it says God inhabitest praise. <laughs> So I couldn't, couldn't, it took me a while to find it. It's Psalm 22, verse 3. It says, Thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. And uh, you know, if you want to be with the Lord, praise Him. <laughs> and uh, it'll change your heart, it'll change your attitude, it'll, it'll help you. It's a good way to pray. And uh, you know, it's just a, a part of, of prayer is praise. So it, these are just some things. To, to think about every once in a while, just stop and think, is, is this the way I'm praying? Uh, am I right with God? Am I right with people? Uh, am I seeking His will, His glory, depending on, upon His Holy Spirit? Am I going to trust Him? Am I going to praise Him? And uh, I think it'll help you in, in your prayer life. I've got some uh, things for next week. It's mainly an assignment for some verses for you to look up. I've put on the back some, some other things about prayer. Um, oftentimes we use the word acts, you know, the book of acts, adoration, confession, thanksgiving, and supplication. Good way to remember some of the things we do in prayer. But the main thing is, uh, I hope this week you'll look up these verses and uh, think about uh, some of the ways that you can, that this would instruct you to pray for yourself. Now, obviously, you could pray this for other people, too. But next week, we're going to look about praying for ourselves. All right, any comments or questions before we take prayer requests tonight? Prayer. Pray about it.